Uh, now uh, I'm turning to Dr. Yanar Ojak. Uh, as you can notice, we are uh, gradually switching from uh, discussing the domestic uh, situation in Iran from gender aspects, environmental issues to more uh, <coughs> geopolitical uh, aspects of, of this story. So um, as an expert on the Middle East, how would you assess the role or weight of the ethnic South Azerbaijani issue in the uh, Middle Eastern geopolitics. Do you believe the Iranian Azerbaijanis represent or might represent some geopolitical uh, importance uh, in the Middle Eastern context? Um, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, the answer to your question is of course yes. And uh, I'm going to rely on two important dimensions. Uh, one is the demographic one, and the second one is the historic one. The demographic one is crucial uh, since the uh, Iranian, since the uh, southern Azerbaijanis in Iran are constituting approximately 72% of the whole population in northwestern Iran, which is also uh, can be named as southern Azerbaijan. And if we are going to look at uh, all of the Turkic groups inside. Uh, then we can also mention uh, Kashkais, Turkmens, Khorasani uh, Turks, uh, and uh, of course Afshar people, Southern Azerbaijan, etc. So uh, the uh, uh, the percentage will come to 40 percent. As a result, we can say that uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran is very much afraid that 40 percent of its own population may lead the disintegration of, uh, from, uh, from Iran. And uh, besides that, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, these uh, groups, uh, uh, they also have another important historical background. Uh, these are the Turkic people. Means that they have very strong relationship with Republic of Azerbaijan, but not only with that, we also with Turkey. Uh, in terms of history, when we are looking at the geography, uh, the city of Tabriz is considered as the most important city of the region. Only city of Tabriz uh, was handed over between the Ottoman Turks and the Iranian Safavids seven times. It means that uh, in term, if we are going to look at the history, we are seeing that the Turks uh, always uh, interfered and always penetrated into this area. While the Turks looked at the southern Azerbaijanis or Azerbaijani people uh, as their ethnic brothers, the Safavids looked at them as their fellow Shiites. So um, this is crucial, demography, uh, history, and if we are going to take all of these to today, so we're going to see that the southern Azerbaijanis, uh, of course, they feel very much detached from the Islamic Republic of Iran. All of the, um, all of the persification that they experienced uh, did not work uh, throughout the years, also in the Shah regime, also in the uh, Islamic regime. And starting with the first Nagorno-Karabakh war, they began to feel very much identified with their own ethnic identity. And of course, my colleague uh, mentioned uh, the cartoon crisis. Uh, there is also the oppression of the uh, football fans of Traktor Sazi uh, Azerbaijani team. Also, we should also highlight that. But I, I believe that the most important milestone was the second Nagorno-Karabakh war. The, after the second Nagorno-Karabakh war and during the war, the southern Azerbaijanis saw that Iran did everything to prevent the uh, Azerbaijani army to liberate the occupied territories from Armenia. And therefore, uh, they organized uh, many protests. And uh, of course, their detachment was even more uh, deepened. In, in the aftermath of the war, the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan paid a very historic visit to the city of Baku and there he recited a very important poem called The Song of the Aras River. The Song of the Aras River historically is known uh, that uh, it is telling the story of the uh, arbitrary division of northern Azerbaijan from the southern Azerbaijan. 
And as a result of this um, uh, Aras River incident uh, in the city of Baku, we began to see in the southern Azerbaijani social media, many people got their cell phones and they recited the uh, song of the Aras River, which is basically declaring their intention to be part uh, with the northern uh, free Azerbaijan. And uh, since I'm coming from Israel, I also would like to provide you an Israeli angle uh, uh, to that. Uh, of course, um, during the war and also before the war, uh, Israel considers itself as an important ally of Azerbaijan. And uh, after the war, when we have seen this uh, victory, uh, our lawmakers in the Israeli parliament, uh, they decided to take an unprecedented uh, unprecedented act and they wrote 32, 32 Israeli uh, lawmakers wrote a letter to the Israeli foreign minister so that the Israeli government will take uh, active role for the southern Azerbaijani coast. Long story short, what we are seeing is, especially after the victory against Armenia, uh, Azerbaijan is no longer will be kept busy with Armenia. Uh, Iranians are seeing it, and as a result, the Turks, Israelis, and also southern Azerbaijanis now have an opportunity to seize uh, to seize the day. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Yanarjo. Uh, we have only two minutes left. Um, you partially explained uh, and uh, maybe you would like to add some more. To what extent do you think this issue, the issue of South Azerbaijan, uh, does shape Iranian foreign policy in, in its neighborhood? Uh, first of all, I would two, like to two mention... Minutes, sorry. Two minutes, no problem. So first of all, I would like to mention that Iran's attitude towards Southern Azerbaijan or towards the Republic of Azerbaijan even became more hostile. Uh, I would like to underline that starting from 2021, the Islamic State of Iran conducted a military drill called the Conquerors of Khaybar next to the uh, Azerbaijani-Iranian border. For those who are not familiar what is Khaybar is, Khaybar uh, was the city that was uh, ruled by the Jews in the Arabian Peninsula and uh, the early uh, Islamic armies conquered this city uh, from the Jews. So the message was clear. Azerbaijan, as an ally of Israel, was threatened with this military drill, okay? And not only that, while uh, the Iranian military posed this uh, concrete threat against uh, the Republic of Azerbaijan, the year later, uh, 2022, uh, Iran inaugurated its uh, consulate in southern Armenia, uh, in a region called Siyunik in Armenian or in Azerbaijani Zangezur, maybe you are familiar. According to the peace, um, according to the ceasefire agreement between uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia, a corridor should be opened from Nakhchivan enclave of Azerbaijan to Azerbaijan proper via Armenia. So it means that the inauguration of this consulate in Zangezur corridor area is a clear message that Iran will co Iran will constitute an obstacle towards this uh, uh, opening of uh, Zangezur corridor. The last but not the least, uh, in January this year, there was a terrorist attack against the Azerbaijani embassy in Tehran. You can Google it. You can see the YouTube uh, footages. The Iranian policeman who supposed to, uh, you know secured the compound, blinded, you know, uh, he was turned a blind eye, and the terrorist entered to the compound and killed an Azerbaijani uh, civilian. This is my hope and this is my analysis that southern Azerbaijan will be a very, will be a very important common denominator for all these three countries to cooperate. Thank you very much for Thank you, me. Dr. Yanajo, for clarification.